Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Mike Pasolos, I'm a composer, and I work at Jam and CMAT. So um, I have a number of research uh, topics uh, that I'm working on. I'm kind of working on. So mainly these are on, on time perception in relation to sound. Uh, on which I had a better ac accepted sound and also on the mapping of how uh, sensory experiences to the oral domain. That has to do with uh, time perception again, on which I gave a few talks uh, uh, last year. Today, however, I will briefly present a new project. Um, the new project I, I, I will start working on very, very soon, the Sonic Palimpsest uh, revisiting Southern Historic Documents. I've been working on this um, proposal, on the proposal for this project for quite some time, and I was um, fortunate to um, have received a positive reply from uh, the Arts uh, and Humanities Research Council who will fund it. So the um, full economy costs approved by the Research Council is nearly £250,000. And the a great starting date is um, the 30th of March, and the project will last for two years and three months. We are a small team of um, uh, three academics, so I'm leading the investigation. Uh, Dr. Andrew Knight-Hill is the co-investigator co <coughs> of the French University, and we will employ a postdoctoral research assistant. Um, the position will be advertised very soon, possibly today or tomorrow, actually. It's going fast now. Uh, we also bring other people. Oops. I mean, sorry. We also bring other people into the project who um, are going to help us with our investigation. We have two partner organizations, the Chatham Historic Dockyard and the Canterbury Academy. Uh, Brompton Academy is um, likely to be engaged as well. Um, we'll bring the historian Dr. Sandra Dunster, who wrote a book on the Medway Towns. Her book documents key changes um, in the Royal Naval Dockyard at Chatham over the course of uh, 350 years. Sandra has agreed to uh, work as a consultant for the project. And we'll also work with the university's IT services to develop a bespoke mapping application, which is an integral part of um, an interactive installation that we create. Um, what the project is about, um, in brief, we aim to recreate soundscapes of the past based on historical documentation and recorded accounts of listening experiences. We will explore the use of sound in heritage contexts through simulation of historical soundscapes and impressionistic interpretations of past sound worlds. We will explore the effectiveness and use of sounds and sound environments which do not exist anymore and we may not know exactly how they sounded like, but we aim to make them appear as believable and real uh, in our sound works. We will develop works that connect the public with uh, historical sites, and we will explore location identity through sound. <clears throat> the project is um, sets out it sets out to answer two main research questions. The first one is. How does the inclusion of sound influence our experience of objects, places, and histories? And the second is, what is the role of sound in the relationship between the individual and personal memory and the community and collective memory? These two research questions are accompanied by a series of more focused inquiries. First, we need to um, find the sources that best describe environmental and man-made sounds that help us identify a place, a community, or a culture from the past three centuries. Second, from those sources, we need to see whether any patterns emerge of how soundscapes change across time and space. Then, we will explore how those descriptions can be practically created as soundscapes in the context of the document. 
During our research, we aim to find whether any particular <laughs> sound environments can be linked to culturally specific historical moments. And we see whether those soundscapes reveal any distinctive features of the prevailing cultures um, at particular periods. Our objectives are to develop a method for depicting scenes of bygone ages of heritage sites by using sound and space. To restore and digitize the historic sound archives currently held the state recordings and Chatham Dogger that are approximately 18 hours. We will use those as material for our research, we will present them for posterity and make them accessible to the public. To evaluate um, the archive recordings and interpret the collected data to help us address our research questions. To collect oral histories through recording interviews with local people, capturing the personal experiences of the document before it became a museum. To create an adaptable site-specific sound installation, which will be exhibited for extended time periods at various locations in the document. The public will be encouraged to record the uh, reactions on uh, the experience. To create music compositions using the restored and replica sound materials, we aim to present those uh, conferences and concerts in the UK and abroad. To produce a website with documentation and evaluation of the project in progress. This will be aimed at both academic and non-specialist audiences. The website will include <coughs> an interactive heritage sound map, which will present the Chatham Courtyard at various ages until the present day. It will also include the compilation of a compilation of impulse responses recorded for the project. Impulse responses capture the acoustic characteristics of spaces that can be very useful to sound designers, for example. Another objective is to um, engage students from local secondary schools who will develop small projects that involve heritage soundscapes. To disseminate research outcomes through articles in peer-reviewed journals, conferences and also in <coughs> magazines, such as the British um, Heritage and Basic History, to communicate the research findings to the general public. And finally, we will organize a conference uh, in the Tokyo on acoustic ecology, which will culminate the project. Uh, we have a provisional target for that, um, which is uh, soundscape simulation and reenactment. We already have a good track record with um, SMFA, uh, with the two conferences on acoustic ecology we organized in the past, um, attracted, attracting international participants and audiences. The Symposium on Acoustic Ecology in 2013 attracted 130 submissions from 18 countries, and the Sound of Memory Symposium in 2017 received 143 submissions from 30 countries. So we aim for a single rate and wider uh, participation in the program. Um, the project is multifaceted and multidisciplinary. It is concerned with um, oral histories, heritage, and interpretation of time and memory, and the relation with location and temporal identity through sound. It is also concerned with the role of sound in human experiences. The project outcomes will benefit academics within the sound and music discipline. More specifically, within the fields of acoustic communication, environmental sound practice, soundscape studies, sound archiving, composition, and sound restoration. Acoustic communication and soundscape ecology scholars will find beneficial the study of historical acoustic environments and how they change over time and the relationship between our sonic surroundings and the individual. Composers and sound artists working with environmental sound will benefit from our exploration of uh, recreating historical sound and they will gain a better understanding of the ways in which reproductions of historical soundscapes are communicated to target audiences. 
We expect that the outcomes <coughs> will also benefit a wide range of uh, scholars in sociology and historical representation. We hope to gain um, an increased understanding of the role of location sound in past periods and a greater knowledge of present-day people's connection with historical places through realistic and imaginative sound. A little more detail on the um, secondary schools now. We will be collaborating with local schools for small projects engaging <coughs> students with heritage soundscapes. We will deliver workshops to the students of those schools. The workshops will focus on using location sound from the broker to generate musical ideas. And they will aim to uh, create links between today's young people and heritage sites, generating also discussions on the changes in the local environment and social life. The workshops will empower school children to compose music with innovative methods. They aim to inspire young people to view the local heritage under a different light, to contemplate their history and understand it in relation to their present lives. Their compositions will be used collectively as a massive sound installation at the Ronda Vocal Church during the second year of the project. The Chatham Historic Dockyard um, <coughs> is our main partner who agreed to grant us access to the tape archives, buildings and other sites and ships in the dockyard. We will engage with the trust in the following ways. We agreed to restore and digitize the raw tape recordings, which are in significant risk of being gradually degraded and permanently ruined. The digitized audio archive will be made accessible to both researchers and the general public, aiming to raise awareness of the local cultural heritage. In addition, it will provide us with material for our research and will be used creatively in our sound compositions and installations. The trust also allows us access to the sites to record impulse responses, as I said earlier. This will be used by our team to study the acoustics of spaces and calculate possible changes in the characteristics of sound according to materials used in different periods. They will also be used in our sound works for the recreation of historical soundscapes. And they will be made publicly available as a sound library through our website. We anticipate that our free sound library will attract members of the sound profession worldwide, such as sound designers, sound artists, those working in film, <coughs> and also performance and recording artists. In short, impulse responses are useful wherever digital sound processing is required. The main installation we will create will offer the innovative experience of visiting past incarnations of the Chatham Tokyo through sound. Visitors will encounter vivid images of price of merchants, clumps of machinery, and other possibly forgotten sounds that will be recreated based on our research. Each soundscape will be unique in terms of location and period, and will be selectable by the user. This unique installation will be flexible and adaptable to multiple locations within the dockyard and aims to create a special connection between audiences and the historic site. Visitors will be able to relive um, in a more immediate way the experiences of the past. We will also engage former workers uh, of the dockyard through interviews. We will collect their own stories to develop our theoretical and practical sides of our research. This will allow those communities to contribute to knowledge. For the opening of the installation, we will invite those who we have interviewed, the students of the collaborating schools and their parents and teachers, as well as senior members of the Chatham Historic Dokia Trust, bringing together a wide variation of generations and social backgrounds. This will also benefit community cohesion by encouraging those visitors to value local links and connections. So, um, there are quite a few ways to engage the local community, but also to create new outputs. And hopefully this project will enable us to devise a method to exploit sounds in heritage sites, which will be scalable and applicable to other situations with a few appropriate adjustments.
I think that's it. I'm sure I will have more to say when the project starts. So this is all what will happen. Thank you very much. Take a couple of questions, Richard. A fantastically exciting project. It's, it's uh, wonderful. I, I'm, I'm particularly interested in, in um, how far back in time will you be recreating sound? Because you, you're going to have to, I mean, there's no sound that exists exactly. until the uh, late. That 1800s. depends on what information we find. I mean, the first dog that. Uh, was established here was in 1581, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So that's quite a long time ago. Um, Sandra Dunster, our historian, walked up to 350 years ago, so mid 17th century. So we'll see what other information we can find if we can go and further back. recreate those, try and recreate the yes. sound of that. Uh, Depending on what was happening in the document at that time. And, and the materials they used. And just is, will there be an opportunity for students to get involved? Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. I mean, the, the environmental experience is essentially that what you're trying to recreate in the intentional aspect of the environment. Um, and what is really interesting is that you probably will find in historic record quite a lot of qualitative accounts of people's description and the nature of the experience of such soundscapes. I've been doing my own research on the thermal environment, Fantastic. You know, the luminous environment, and trying to reconstruct it through historic records. And you're surprised if you're going back to the sources with that hat on and looking for this type of evidence, how much this is being commented on. Absolutely, this is what uh, really it's in the public realm. This is something that is gets um, the newspapers get reporting maybe on certain events they will make references. Absolutely. So that is actually a way of reconstructing things even before recording words <coughs> anymore. We did the speculative research before starting this of course. So there is material there that we can you know, draw information from uh, about sounds and sound environments. So, uh, yeah, one more question please. It's less of a question and more I, I just think this project is so invaluable to this area in particular because since um, we've lost the dockyard to a certain degree um, you know for the local community this is going to be such an important opportunity educationally particularly for younger people to get involved with the history of this area and raise the profile of Medway because you know there, there has been such a problem in this area over the past sort of 30 years Thank you. Thanks so much. I, I think we have to move on. Here, so, but have a question over lunch. But thank you very much. Thank you.